Everybody listen up. You're going to hear how you're supposed to be conducting yourself in a relationship, everyone. This is supposed to be something you keep the receipts and you make sure that your girlfriend pays you back. Like yes. later on, you have to work out what things are worth and she has to work it off, basically, right? Relationships are purely Or she owes you and like you can go to court and get that money yeah, back, no. right? Yeah. No. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So we found another really interesting law drama case. I don't necessarily like to talk about people's personal drama, but in this case, the there's going to be a victim and there's going to be a perpetrator and the perpetrator has put all of this on the record which is very unfortunate for the victim who now has to defend herself on the record i'm of course talking about the lawyer who sued his fiance to try and win her back yeah is there really a, is there a better way to say it he, he really did he sued her to try and force her to make to make the alternatives to dating him so dark that she would that she would just reluctantly give in and date him. Do you think that will work? Because I I could try that. Yeah, I mean I mean is that is that the solution to all of the world's dating problems? I think so. Go go look up uh, the controversy with Jordan Peterson's forced uh, what was it called monogamy, forced, forced monogamy. monogamy or whatever, yeah. um, which is not. By the way, I looked it up. I watched the interview. I'm not a big fan of Jordan Peterson or anything, but that's not what he said. No. That's not what he said. So uh, go watch what he actually said and then decide for yourself whether you like or don't like the guy. But don't take the lying people uh, at their word. Um, he did not say that. But it, it, but this is this is that concept. This is that concept, right? This is the forced monogamy concept. Can, can he I, is suing his girlfriend to be his girlfriend, force her to be his girlfriend, right? <laughs> so this is Syed Hussein. I, I'm gonna that's the best I can come up with, and Elena Emily Todorov and Doe's 1v10. And this is a complaint in the Superior Court of Los Angeles, unlimited jurisdiction, which I'm I'm assuming is a county or or a state of law of California term. I don't know what that means. Uh, compl this is a complaint for promissory fraud. First off, I don't even know what promissory fraud is. I know what fraud is. Yeah, they would go for promissory, sort of promissory fraud would mean estoppel. fraud in a promise. Yes. So I would expect some kind of like unjustified or or uh, justified re or unjust reliance. No, detrimental reliance. Excuse me. I would expect some kind of detrimental reliance, intentional infliction of emotional distress, breach of contract, and unjust enrichment. So let's see what he has to say here. Plaintiff became acquainted with defendant in the spring of 2005. Plaintiff and defendant developed a close relationship which continued until March 2019, so this year. Over the course of their 14-year relationship, plaintiff spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on defendant. He would frequently purchase for defendant fancy meals, airline tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, fine jewelry, designer handbags, high-end clothing, and more. Plaintiff enjoyed defendant's company, even though the relationship resulted in plaintiff paying for nearly every expense incurred while plaintiff and defendant were together. Everybody listen up. You're going to hear how you're supposed to be conducting yourself in a relationship, everyone. This is supposed to be something you keep the receipts and you make sure that your girlfriend pays you back. Like yes. later on, you have to work out what things are worth and she has to work it off basically, right? Relationships are purely Or she owes you and like you can go to court and get that money yeah, back, no. right? Yeah. No. As the relationship evolved, defendant began to frequently disappear for extended periods of time. Also, you're supposed to keep track of your girlfriend. Remember that. You have to keep track of she has to, she has to, she has to appear before you at regular intervals it's or like, else. It's like a working relationship. Or else. She has to put in the hours and stuff. Yeah. yeah. When defendant did make time to see plaintiff, it would only be because they planned to travel together or go to an expensive dinner or engage in another activity that required plaintiff to spend substantial sums of money on defendant. As their relationship progressed, plaintiff, because it's, you know, it's progressing. He's spending all this money, yet the relationship's progressing. So at the time, it sounds like he was fine with it. As their relationship progressed, plaintiff began to feel the defendant was taking advantage of plaintiff's generosity and friendship. When it was to defendant's financial gain and emotional benefit to be in close contact with plaintiff, she made the necessary arrangements to do so. You know, because we often 
make it our not financial gain and emotional, but we want to be around people who don't benefit emotionally or financially. Yeah, no. I mean, I'm not saying she couldn't be. I, I'm not. I'm not saying she could or couldn't be a gold digger. You know, and, and that's a term that applies to men and women equally. But, but I, 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 I am broke, saying broke. that it is not weird that a person would want to be around someone who has financial gain and emotional benefit. That that's normal to want to be around. So you you think your you think your romantic <laughs> partner might be a net positive in your life? Yeah, that might be one thing. Yeah, if your romantic partner is a that. negative in your life, then maybe maybe they shouldn't be your romantic partner. Yeah. When she no longer felt the need to contact plaintiff, plaintiff says, however, defendant ignored him and disappeared from plaintiff's life for extended periods of time. Defendant's disappearances grew more frequent. Defendant would regularly appear in plaintiff's life around October each year just in time to receive her annual birthday gift in November, Christmas gift in December, holiday vacation for New Year's to Park City and Aspen, and then Valentine's Day in February, and then she would disappear in late February or March. While defendant would on occasion visit plaintiff, her appearances were always for self-serving purposes and would always result in defendant disappearing yet again as soon as it su suited her needs and interests. Oh, oh this, just, this, this, this is sad. But he keeps seeing her. Yet he keeps seeing her. Um, does, does it sound like he's attracting other people am i getting ahead of myself here does it sound like other people are attracted to him and, and he has you know lots of choices in the dating market i don't know i'm maybe i'm being a little bit mean but uh when you choose to attract people with money and vacations yeah it's what yeah. you're gonna get that this is a this is this is like a this is like a, a problem that that everybody has Everybody dates and has this problem. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that this is this case, but I can imagine like an extreme version of this where this would kind of make sense. Like you could imagine someone who is just completely manipulating someone yeah. for economic gain. And I mean, there have been certainly cases with, with that, and uh, both men yeah. and women. So you could imagine yeah. the case where someone is acting completely in bad faith. Yeah, I've even known a person who knew that the person woman they were in love with was acting in bad faith and they still couldn't help themselves and they continued to yeah. pursue her and she would take all the gifts and take all the tickets to concerts and things like that and she'd even hang out with him but there was never any touchy-feely or more than that and she actually went from boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend while still taking this guy's affections and he knew it like eventually i just sat him down and explained it to him and was like Dude, you know you're getting taken. He's like, yeah, I can't help it. He was just like super in love with her. Yeah. And I'm, she just, she was just like, fine. If she's not going to leave me alone, I'm going to take advantage of him. I can't, I don't know if I can blame her for it at some point. Like maybe at first, but when he's just constantly pursuing her. So it get it can get bad. So yeah, so does this fall into the category of just normal relationship where he's bitter about it? Or does this fall into the category of someone who's truly manipulative and took him for a ride. And so he's trying to get some redress on the back end. So how much sympathy should I feel for this guy is basically my, my argument at this question point. Throughout the period that they were together, defendant would coerce plaintiff into buying her numerous expensive personal items, dinners and vacations as discussed. Frustrated and upset by defendant's repeated disappearances, plaintiff decided to seek formal assurances from defendant that her behavior coming in and out of plaintiff's life would cease. You, I wonder how this went. Blackleaf, I've been spending a lot of time and money with you. Will you please assure me that you're going to commit to our relationship that you haven't committed to even though I've been spending all this money on you? I think it went something almost exactly like that. On or about June 2016, plaintiff and defendant met for dinner. During the dinner, plaintiff expressed to defendant his frustration regarding defendant's frequent disappearances. Defendant acknowledged the issue and after some discussion agreed that she would stay in a relationship with plaintiff without disappearing, going silent, or otherwise breaking off the relationship. Which you could say as we're going to give our relationship a, a shot, like a committed relationship a shot. But no, he's phrased it like that. Yeah. In very controlling language. This is the part where he loses my sympathy yeah, that this, I was trying to give him. This is very controlling language. Yeah. This is, he doesn't want another person to have autonomy or agency or independence. 
it feels like he's trying to own her. Um, yeah, and as as a man who has a girlfriend across a sea, and we are completely independent from one another, and yet we still love each other, I feel like I am light years ahead of this guy's ego. You haven't like, been keeping a time card? Um, she, I'll, I'll put it this way. She shares her location with me at all times, and I, I never check it, like... One time when I wanted to see, like, is she awake? I checked it to see if she had, like, mo- like moved or anything. Like, location had moved. Just so I wouldn't send her a text message because I couldn't tell if she was awake or not. But that was it. Like, one time I checked it. Um, no, that's not true. One, once in a while, I will check it when she's coming home from work to see, like, how she's doing on her way home because she loses cell phone signal and I can't um, talk to her on the way home yeah. from work. So that's the most that I've ever used it for. Like I, I am, I will fully admit that I have not, I have, I have made some dating mistakes, and I have occasionally been slightly controlling individual, but not like this, not like this. I mean, I was more like, "You're spending an awful lot of time with that other guy. I don't like that kind of thing." Uh, this, this is sort of like that, but this is beyond that. This is like in this, like in that vein. But you just kept going, man. Don't, don't, don't do this. By the way, this is an example of what not to do. Yeah. And so I think that she was making him feel kind of insecure because he was um, in his own mind investing a lot into this relationship. And he wasn't sure that it was actually a relationship, um, which is a red flag. <laughs> like That's usually the time in which you go, OK, maybe this person isn't good for me. But rather than saying, this person isn't good for me. He tried to like cling tighter to her. And that was his reaction. Yeah. And I've not, and again, not that none of us have ever, we've all, uh, or, or, or are capable of having these emotions. It's how we react to them. That separates us. That defines yeah. Instead us. of saying this is unhealthy to have someone who makes me feel used, who makes me feel insecure, who makes me feel like maybe she's not in this for me. His reaction was like, well, let's sign a contract. Yeah. Ver- like verbally, oh, let's negotiate a contract. Yeah. Speaking of overreactions, a plaintiff documented defendant's agreement by taking a photo of plaintiff and defendant shaking hands. I, d- I just thought maybe we should insert that fact into the controlling behavior discussion. How did he do that? I want to know exactly. I like, <laughs> click. I don't know. Like you just like a click. <laughs> yeah. Know? Hold my phone up and be like, click as we shake hands yeah i guess i guess it would have to be my left hand since i shake with my right wasn't that the old roman tradition that you shook hands when you got married plaintiff is informed and believes that at the time defendant made this initial agreement she had no intention of staying in any form of relationship with plaintiff in fact plaintiff is informed and believes that defendant was in a relationship with another man at the time however plaintiff was ignorant of defendant's true intentions and never believed defendant would actually be targeting him as a victim. He now, now he's being targeted as the victim. Well, this I, is the person who is intentionally dating him to defraud him of money. I'm cognizant what? of a fact pattern where this makes sense. Like I can imagine the case where she's actively deceiving him, actively telling him one thing. It's not representative to get these extracted gifts, so forth and so on. Yeah. So like I'm halfway in between this makes sense, and this is just complete BS. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. After her dinner with plaintiff, defendant repeatedly reaffirmed her promises whenever she wanted to induce plaintiff to purchase expensive gifts for her. In reliance on defendant's promises, plaintiff continued to purchase lavish gifts, meals, personal items, and trips for defendant. Unfortunately, defendant regularly failed to perform under her agreement with plaintiff, frequently disappearing or cutting off the relationship with plaintiff for one reason or another. In October 2018, following an expensive international trip to Europe where plaintiff paid for everything except defendant's airfare, defendant asked plaintiff to buy her a designer handbag and an expensive bracelet. Plaintiff initially was reluctant to purchase the items for defendant, given her previous disappearances and failure to abide by the terms of their initial agreement, which sounds an awful lot like quid pro quo. Yeah, it makes it sound contractual. Makes it sound, see, that's where he loses me. Nevertheless, plaintiff stated that he would purchase the handbag and bracelet and continue to buy her expensive items, meals, and vacations if she guaranteed that she would give the relationship an honest effort for at least one year. 
Plaintiff further discussed with defendant that after one year of their relationship, they would agree either to get engaged or mutually end the relationship, but under no circumstances would either decision be made prior to the passing of one full calendar year to fully and fairly evaluate the relationship and feasibility of moving forward together. Defendant agreed, and in reliance on their oral agreement, plaintiff purchased the handbag and bracelet for her. Uh, in reliance on their agreement, I bought you a gift. That's that's the quality of this gentleman, everyone. This is like the wrong version of Pretty Woman. <laughs> you know, like, this is like... <laughs> <laughs> ugly, ugly man. Should I call this pretty woman, ugly man? Yeah, let's do it. Let's call it that. Pretty woman, ugly man. Pretty woman will do pretty woman in the same style as the movie poster and then ugly man in, in like the same style, but like with a different color or something to differentiate it as dark. In the months thereafter, and in reliance on defendant's promises and agreement, plaintiff continued to buy defendant expensive personal items, trips to Hawaii, Aspen, Park City, and Coachella. Groceries, fine jewelry, designer clothing, and fine dining experiences. Despite receiving all of these expensive items and without warning, defendant abruptly ended the relationship with plaintiff in or around March 2019. Defendant thereafter refused to communicate with plaintiff, retrieve her personal belongings that plaintiff had graciously kept in storage for her or otherwise compensate plaintiff for the losses he incurred. Holy effing mackerel someone is this inappropriate to say just tell me because it's okay but it sounds like someone might have an ego problem that actually needs to be addressed by professional help yeah i mean the the way this is pled makes it That's sound it. just like he expected this as a contractual relationship yeah i put in all this investment and so you were supposed to contractually give me back yeah affection love and all the rest of it now I think the Beatles once sang a song about Can't Buy Me Love. Can't Buy Me Love, yep. So that's the way this is pled. So what, uh, Blackleaf, would a lawyer know about contracting for affections or sex or a relationship? You can't, can you? No, not no, not really. Not These so are not legal objects of a contract and a contract for um, any uh, intimate affections. So stop so I don't have to say, keep saying the word. Uh, any contract for... Um, Act, like feel like actual physical affections might might be okay as a service provided by like a masseuse kind of thing. I'm thinking of some of the we unconventional. I won't say weird. Unconventional. You can buy hugging in Japan. You can buy cuddling in Japan. Yes, apparently. Um, there are also then you know on the flip side there are very adult services that don't involve actual intercourse yes and those things are legal as well so he's got a he's got if that was what was going on here, but that's this obviously not what is going on here he is not hiring her to provide fake affections he's hiring her to have a relationship with him and to fall that's in love with him to fall in love with him and that's an illegal object of contract right I say it's not a valid consideration. Yeah. In researching this a little bit, uh, some states do have um, an old tort on the book where it's if a man promises to marry a woman and then breaks it off, that she could sue him. Um, and it's, you know, from way, way back in the day in which women didn't really have yeah. financial independence. And so promise if a guy promised to marry her then that like that really affected her ability to access money to yeah. be able to support herself uh, and so denying that let's be clear let's be fair here i this is this is historical i do not support any sexism or anything but historically speaking poor people did not marry for love most people married for survival they married to create a family unit they married compatible people that would bring something to the relationship. Often it was financial in one way or the other. Either a woman had to bring finances or the man had to bring finances so that the family unit could survive. And it is only a fairly recent concept that we try to marry for love and care about finances second. When you ask a lawyer, especially when you ask a family law lawyer, it still seems like people marry for money and sex. 
love is a good thing to have, friendship is a good thing to have, but there are an awful lot of people who marry into a situation. It's only recently that we've been moving away from the situational marriages. Uh, remember, marriages uh, in many cultures still are, but used to be um, arranged. So he sues for promissory fraud, which is kind of like promissory estoppel or detrimental reliance. Uh, and he asks for $225,000. He sues for intentional infliction of emotional distress, which this is by by layperson standards, this would have to be severe emotional mm -hmm. distress. Like he had to go seek a counselor, and the counsel, and you can document the damage in, in like in sort of dollars of, of therapy. That's that's sort of what that means. It's a very difficult thing to prove. Uh, it does say severe emotional distress, but it does not say how much money. Yeah, it doesn't tend to quantify that either. And breach of contract is also two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Unjust enrichment is also two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Compensatory, special damages, disgorgement, disgorgement. all Ooh. funds paid, punitive damages. Yep, exemplary or punitive damages to punish his uh, girlfriend for breaking up with him. He wants exemplary or punitive damages. Attorney's fees, pre and post judgment interest, and other relief. Yowza. And this, and this, he hired an attorney. A, a, an attorney represented this in court, which is not a Rule 11 violation because it's a state court, but still, it's along those same lines. But this is not the end. She has responded. Ooh. And I thought first we should go over her memorandum uh, for a change of venue. This was from. November 1st, and this is the defendant. This is the the wife, or, or, or uh, not wife. Girlfriend. This is the, this is the no, not, this is the ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Defendant Todorov submits this memorandum and points of authority in support of her motion to transfer the case from the wrong court of Los Angeles to the right court of San Francisco. After years of friendship and a brief dating relationship of approximately four months, defendant ended her relationship with plaintiff. This did not go smoothly. Aside from the difficulties of a failed relationship and a breakup, defendant was not afforded the opportunity to move past this and on with her life. Defendant faced a whole new series of problems. For two months, plaintiff inundated defendant with text messages, phone calls, emails, letters, showed up at her home against her wishes, contacted her friends regarding their relationship. Yet, when defendant explicitly in writing demanded that plaintiff not contact her again, plaintiff did not take kindly to this. From that moment on, he changed his tune completely from an extended campaign attempting to rekindle the relationship to the filing of a lawsuit, apparently to crush her financially or in some odd misguided attempt to continue the relationship through litigation. In his complaint, plaintiff brings suit against defendant for a number of causes of action for not staying in a relationship with him as if she were his property. The allegations are that plaintiff and defendant made agreements that she would not leave his life or that they would stay together in a relationship for one year, at the end of which they would either be engaged or part. Plaintiff alleges that defendant made said statements with no intention of staying in the relationship and now seeks a minimum amount of $225,000 for reimbursement for trips and gifts he purchased for defendant. Plaintiff further seeks exemplary and punitive damages. Um, so then I'm going to skip the venue part because we don't really care about that, do we? We really just want to be, uh, we, we really want to read about the drama here, don't we? Yeah. Um, what, so, what court should this be in? Well, that's a technical issue. Let's get to the meat of this thing. Defendant resides in San Francisco and has for many years. Her declaration attesting to such is attached. No exception to the jealously guarded right uh, to trial in her county resi of residence applies. Since the plaintiff has filed suit for fraud, proper venue lies in the county of defendant's residence. Let's see what she writes down here. Declaration. She lives in San Francisco. They met in college, were friends for many years, dated for approximately one month in early 2018, and then again for four months in late 2018 until March of 2019. So she sees their relationship a little bit differently than he does, huh? They were together for many years, according to him. And she says, no, we were friends for many years, and then we dated like for five months total over the course of two different periods of time. After unceasing harassment, many, many text messages, emails, letters, calls, voicemails, showing up uninvited at my home, etc., sending gifts to my place of work, that's not creepy at all, for approximately two months, despite my demands to stop contacting me, I blocked his phone number so I would no longer receive his messages. 
Later that same day, I sent an email to him explicitly in writing that he was not to contact me. Minutes later, he replied to the email, and then I blocked his email, so I would no longer receive his emails. Exhibit A is a true and correct copy of his email correspondence. Wow, that would be really nice to have. From this point forward, Mr. Hussein's contact with me has been through the others, his attorney and attorney's agents. I am informed and believe that Mr. Hussein has filed a similar type of lawsuit against another woman. Maybe we could try to find that. He told me in December 2018 that he had to go to Nevada County for a court hearing because his ex-girlfriend had obtained a domestic violence restraining order against him. He informed me that he had filed a civil lawsuit against this ex-girlfriend. I believe that he has filed this legal action to harass me, crush me financially, see email correspondence, or in a misguided attempt to force our relationship into continuing and not for a legitimate legal dispute. The fact that he filed the lawsuit in Los Angeles only furthers those ends. We both have lived in Northern California for the duration of the time we have known each other and spent very limited time together in Los Angeles. During the time that we were dating, I lived in my apartment in San Francisco, and he lived with his parents in Hillsborough in San Mateo, just south of San Francisco. While dating, we spent the majority of our time together in San Francisco, one of the world's most expensive cities. It's up there. It, oh, yeah. It is. So, I mean, he the $225,000 doesn't go a lot, as long in San Francisco as it would in like Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. No, it's like 350, right? <laughs> yeah. While dating, we took a single weekend trip to Los Angeles. Prior to dating in 2018, we took a weekend trip to Los Angeles and on another occasion the same year we drove from San Francisco to Santa Barbara for a weekend trip during which time we drove to Malibu for lunch before returning to San Francisco. The prospect of a lawsuit is daunting in and of itself, and a lawsuit in Los Angeles would be an extreme hardship for me financially, and due to the fact that I live and work in San Francisco, I declare under penalty of perjury. So, I, I really, really wish that we had the email that she's talking about. We do, of course. And the email is from... Oh, this should be good. Yeah. I'm going to read it. This is him talking to her. So, he writes to her, Elena... I appreciate you telling me, at least, that you do not want any further contact. I will respect, but unfortunately, if you are not willing to sit down and talk through our issues, I have no choice but to proceed with a lawsuit as I have no other recourse. All I want is to sit down talk. His words. Simply put, I need closure. I, too, am not happy with the way things ended, but I can't accept the way it ended, and it would be best to meet and discuss in a calm manner. The two gifts were not conditional that they were in appreciation for your friendship. Well, that seems a little disingenuous. He said in the lawsuit that they weren't gifts, that they were conditional, that they made an agreement before he gave the gifts. Hmm. I have no intention of holding them over your head. Also a lie. <laughs> it seems like you did exactly that, but I could be mistaken, I suppose. Yeah, I guess you could. Yeah. I don't know. I could read. Sure. I, I could read. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to the audience to decide. Yeah. Narrator kicks in. It's like, and he would hold them over. <laughs> <laughs> no point leaving the box with the front desk as I won't be picking them up. I have never held any gift over your head and I am offended you would think that. It seems again that he did exactly that. I do, however, expect you to honor the agreement you made with me to not ever give the silent treatment again. Wow. <laughs> You can't be silent when you're mad. She is contractually is obligated. That to is talk super, to him. super controlling. If, OMG. If by silent treatment you mean please don't ever contact me again, then okay. Yowza. Holy mackerel. So, so he's like, Yeah, so I, I appreciate that you don't want to ever speak to me again. And, you know, I respect that. But also, you're obligated to speak to me. Like, like, he's so two-faced in the email. It's not that I've never heard this voice deep in the dark annals of my brain, but I, like, I have other parts of my brain that function and go, oh, wow, like, that's a really dark part of your brain. Like, don't listen to that. Like, that must be from, like, you know, when you had to, back when people had to defend themselves from attacks or something, like, like, like in tribal days or something. I once heard a, a obviously mentally ill person saying the things that I hear that voice say, like, oh, you're worthless, you're nothing but a loser, you know, you, you'll never amount to anything, and much worse, I'm, I'm trying to be polite here. Um, that, that's a voice that, like, that's the, bad, that's, that's the dark wolf, that's the bad wolf, you don't feed that wolf, you feed the good wolf. Obviously, uh, Mr. Hussein here is having trouble feeding the good wolf here. 
no i I understand that part like you definitely have the dark parts of you and it's it's human it's human to have this initial thought like i'm gonna get everybody who did something it's a that's that's a normal human reaction and then you stop yourself from reacting or you simply don't react and you don't overreact you don't inappropriately react and you do move on with your life you go you 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 apparently he can't do these things too easily He says, I'd like to work through our issues so at least I can rest easy at night. Well, well, there's a very human sentiment. It definitely is very uh, distracting when you're having relationship issues. Unfortunately, I feel like he's causing many of his relationship issues by being controlling. Who would want to be with such a controlling person? I certainly wouldn't want to be. I think you assume the lawsuit I'm talking about is for those two items, but I assure you it is not. Rather, it is for the years of leading me on with no real intention of dating me. It's for what you did in 2017 and what you did recently. You know what you did, right? Uh, My my words. His words, the statutes are nearing for the things you did in 2017, so my attorneys have advised me to file suit immediately before the statutes expire. Also, can we call these attorneys spineless for not advising him that this is not in his best interest? This this just feels like nice guy syndrome gone completely wrong. It's oh, like, yeah, I, like, I am just investing in you and I'm expecting a return. So that is the like classic like nice guy manifestation yeah yeah. elena you're one of my best friends and i don't want this to escalate to litigation it will be the point of no return and the only people who will win are attorneys uh yeah yes and and maybe someone should should maybe scold those attorneys a little bit for letting him file this in their name like they signed they they wrote this they signed it they shouldn't have let him do that Please think rationally rather than with emotions. Elena, a lawsuit is going to open the door to so many things, including depositions of all your ex-boyfriends, that my attorneys are planning to subpoena to prove your pattern. It will involve a lengthy deposition of you that will require you, by law, to answer very private matters that will become public, both relating to me and others. All of this will become a matter of public record. Many things you don't want the public to see since you are such a private person. Just starting to become extortionate here. Like I would I would think about maybe uh, hitting him back with a claim of some kind of extortion. I don't want that for you, but again, I need closure. And it seems that this is the only way since you don't want to sit down and talk. I really urge you to consider sitting down and talking with me. Otherwise, I reluctantly have no choice but to move forward with the lawsuit. They are planning to sue you for breach of contract, fraud, deceit, and concealment, unjust enrichment, and willful infliction of emotional distress. It really hurt when I saw the picture they painted of you in the complaint they drafted. What are drafted. you talking about? You're the plaintiff. This is you doing this. Yes, he's... Uh, he, he's what do you mean they? This is you. himself from the attorneys that he's hired... What they are, kind they are of delusional. They they are planning to asshole. do all these things to you. Wait a second. No, you're the plaintiff. This is you. This defense will be really costly. Do you want to spend tens of thousands of dollars rather than spending some time to sit down and work through what's really bothering the both of us? If you just stay with me, Stockholm syndrome will kick in. Um, and this oh. is something that is really, Awful. really typical of of people who are controlling abusive. people are like this. Yes, yeah. both men that and women. Is, both men and women. Yes. Yeah. So it is. It, this is. Um, you'll see. So say if there was a physical altercation, that the aggressor will say, "Look what you made me do." Yeah. And it is putting blame onto the person that is being attacked. And the attacker is saying, I have no choice. You put me in a situation which I had no choice but to lay out X punishment. And you're so you're taking no responsibility yourself. You're saying any reasonable person in my position would have no choice but to enact this damage on you. And that is really unhealthy. And yeah. that is if he's willing to do this through a lawsuit, yeah. I I believe that this, this is like a pattern of behavior. For yeah, him. this is like those videos where you see someone like at their wedding ceremony, slap their bride or, or, or grab their bride and like, you know, control her. Like you've ever seen any, any of those. It's super scary. 
like this person these people are about to get committed to one another and one of them is being already physically aggressive with the other in a non-consensual way that's scary and if you're willing to do it on the wedding day imagine what you're willing to do behind closed doors I really urge you to take some time out of your schedule to sit down with me. Obviously, I can't force you to do so, and if you are so adamant about not speaking with me, I'm out of options, and that is unfortunate. If there is no friendship left to protect, I need to move forward with the suit. Please let me know if there is any chance you would consider sitting down with me to discuss. Meanwhile, while I will respect your boundary of not contacting you as you have to finally told me, I am well within my rights to pursue legal action. I'm very sorry for all of this, best Syed. And no, no, he is not well within his rights to pursue legal action. Let's let's that be clear here. Uh, unless unless there's a bombshell waiting to drop of evidence that no one's presented yet that she no. is a serial gold digger. Well, I don't even know what the standard is for that. We have to, we'll have to look up cases for that, but his attorneys have really better have done their due diligence. Well, because they did. from this perspective, and this is my opinion, from my perspective, it looks like the attorneys are the gold diggers. Yeah, I mean, the way that the complaint is drafted, it's not drafted that way, and this letter certainly not written that way. So it's like, in, in trying to adjudicate who is in the wrong here, it's like, this guy is not winning my sympathies. Thank you for joining us. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This is Kurt Mueller, your favorite patent attorney. And we are lawful masses. You are also lawful masses. You are our audience of lawful people who watch our lawful masses. Did I say the word lawful masses enough? Thank you for your support on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.com slash law. This channel would not exist without your financial support and your financial support is directly required for us to grow to the next level. So please consider visiting those websites and contributing on a monthly basis to our mission. Thank you very much to our supporters for November. Thank you to our $50 plus supporters, Joe Tyson, Aspernari, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Gray, Daniel Perez, Snorri W, Blackleaf, that guy, Benjamin Hytov, and Steven. Thank you very, very much for your support. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel back there and will be on the in front of me here and the crawl on the videos that we drop. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. That is Kurt Mueller, your favorite patent attorney. And we love you all. Have a great week. We'll see you in the videos that drop. Bye.